plus. In the previous video, we derived the equations of the projectile motion. So let's have a look at them. We said that the acceleration equals minus gj. And as you can notice, the acceleration has only one component, which is a y. Because the only force acting on the projectile while in motion is its own weight directed vertically downwards. There is no net force acting on the projectile on the uh, horizontal component. So there is no ax component. Now let's look at the velocity. The velocity has two components, vx and vy. And as you can notice that vx doesn't depend on time. So vx is a constant. It's equal to v0 cosine alpha. Both are constant. Vx component doesn't depend on time. It means that it stays the same from the beginning to the end of the motion of the projectile. Now let's see the Vy component. The Vy component depends on time. It means that it changes from one position to, the, to another position. When the ball starts to go up, the Vy component starts to decrease because it's against the gravity until it reaches the maximum point where Vy becomes zero. Then Vy increases again because uh, now the ball is with the gravity. Let's draw Vy. have a look at the position vector r. In the position vector we also have two components x and y. In a classical projectile exercise you will be usually asked about other information related to the projectile such as the equation of trajectory, the maximum height and the range. We will derive these equations in this video. equation of a trajectory we mean relation between x and y coordinates of the projectile and we need this equation because sometimes we have one of them we have one of the coordinates and we want to know the other so the equation of a trajectory is a relation between the two coordinates of the projectile x and y and it is time independent so let's derive this equation we get x from here so this factor that's multiplied by i is x And y is the factor multiplied by j. Again, we want an equation that is independent of time. So we will take t from this equation and then we will substitute it in the other equation. So now we will substitute t in the equation of y. So we put t squared, again this is t, rearranging the equation, Okay, we can cancel v0 and sine alpha over cosine alpha is tangent alpha. What does this equation tell us? It tells us that the relation between the two coordinates y and x of the projectile is y in terms of x squared. Because as you can notice that all of these are constants. So g, v0, and alpha are all constant, and again, tangent alpha is constant. So here we have y in terms of x squared. This is an equation called the parabola. And it is a curve, which is this curve, drawn by the projectile during its motion. Now we want to find the maximum height reached by the projectile y maximum where y maximum is the maximum value of y reached by the projectile during its motion. So how can we find it? If we look at the maximum height, we notice that Vy equals to zero at the maximum height. 
Because as we said, Vx remains constant throughout the motion of the projectile, but Vy varies from one location to another. At the maximum height, it becomes zero. Okay, so we want to find at what time Vy becomes zero. So Vy equals to zero. Where this time is the time needed by the projectile to reach its maximum position starting from the launching point. Now we want to find the maximum height, y maximum. So when we substitute this value of time in this uh, equation here, we can find y maximum. So when we substitute t in this equation, we get y max. Rearranging the equation, we get... So we cancel g. And this is v0 squared sine squared of... Okay, so we multiply here by 2, we get y maximum equal v0 squared sine squared alpha over 2g. Where we use this equation, we want to find the maximum height reached by the projectile for the given value of the initial velocity v0 and the angle alpha. Now we want to find the range of the projectile, where the range is the horizontal distance x traveled by the projectile. So how can we find r? x equals r when y equals y0. That is, x equals the range when the projectile reaches the, max, the, the same vertical height that it started from. In our case, y0 equals 0 because the launching point is from the origin. So let's put this factor equals to zero to see at what instant y equals to zero. We will take t as common factor. So here we have two solutions. First, t equals to zero. Because at t equals to 0, y equals to 0. But at this instant, x also equals to 0. We want to find the other instant where y equals to 0 when x equals the range. So, So this is the time needed by the projectile to reach uh, this point here, which we call the range. Now we want to find the range of the projectile, which is the value of x at this instant. So x equals v0 cosine alpha t. We will substitute this value of t here. So here we have v0 squared. Now, sine 2 sine alpha cosine alpha equals sine 2 alpha. We will use this identity and the range is v0 squared sine 2 alpha over g. So this is the value of the range of the projectile for a given value of alpha and v0. Let's check how can we make and how can we increase the range of the projectile. So if we look at the equation of the range that we just derived, r equals sine 2 alpha v0 squared over g. So g is a constant. We can increase the range either by increasing the value of v0 or by making sine 2 alpha maximum. So for a given value of v0, we can increase the range by letting sine 2 alpha be maximum. So when is sine 2 alpha maximum? 
As you know, the maximum value of the sine and the angle can be 1. So sine 2 alpha, the maximum value of sine 2 alpha is equal 1 when the angle is equal to pi over 2 or 90. So when the angle is pi over 2, we get sine equal, the angle equals 1. It means that alpha equals pi over 4 or 45 degrees. So for an angle of 45 degrees, and for a given value of the initial velocity v0, you can get the maximum range reached by the projectile. And this is everything for this video.